So Mark Brown, better known as the host of the YouTube channel Game Maker's Toolkit, recently started working on his own game, which is awesome. Maybe someday I'll make my own game. Anyways, he's been recently making devlogs on his game's development on his channel and recently released a demo for his patrons to play, which includes me as of last Thursday. Look, I really want to check out this game. Whatever. Point is, I've played the game and I thought I might as well give some of my thoughts, along with some constructive criticism. So without any further ado, let's dive straight in. Mark Brown's game, titled Untitled Magnet Game, brilliant, revolves around a central mechanic of picking up and throwing around a magnet. You can use this mechanic along with side mechanics to solve puzzles. This main idea is actually pulled off really well. The magnet, for the most part, feels great to use, and later puzzles are actually pretty difficult, requiring thought and preparation to solve. You can use the magnet to pull down weights, block lasers, and more that I won't spoil. It's all a lot of fundamentals to run with, and if you think something will happen a certain way, it probably will. For instance, near the beginning of the game, you get a fairly easy puzzle. I mean, it looks super easy at first. Just go under, jump up these platforms, and proceed. But here's the twist. You can't go under the platform while holding the magnet. Now, I assumed my hitbox stayed the same after picking up the magnet, but clearly it didn't. The magnet is its own object that just won't fit, which makes perfect sense, I just didn't think about it. The whole game is full of these realizations. For instance, another early puzzle has you throw a magnet onto a button on the wall. It's super easy and super simple, but was still a small, yet interesting, realization. Because obviously the button is an object and the magnet is an object, so of course they can interact. It's great. There are more of these realizations, but like I said, I don't want to spoil them all. One of my favorite puzzles has one, and it's right at the end, but I'll let you guys figure it out when the game comes out. So this game does have a lot of good puzzles, and I can't wait to solve more when the full game comes out. However, the game's not perfect. I mean, for starters, there's plenty of bugs, but they're obviously going to be patched out. Like how you can run into the side of these one-way platforms, when in reality, you should just be able to go right through it. Or how on one level, I was able to jump into the middle of a one-way platform and just stand there. Um, I assume this is not intentional. Or how one time I could get a magnet to basically be completely off the metallic surface, but still stick. But anyways, things like this will most likely get fixed in the full game, because they're just straight up bugs. However, there are some annoyances that aren't explicitly bugs. Like how the game kept having these button prompts that tell me to push X, or square if you're using the PlayStation controller. Or I guess Y if you're on Switch, or I don't know, I had an old controller that has a 2 on it. I don't know. Whatever. Point is, it kept popping up. Now at first, it was helpful, it taught me what to do, but it just kept showing up. Now, it didn't technically make the gameplay worse, it didn't stop me from solving the puzzle, but it was still annoying. It felt like the game didn't think I was smart enough to figure out what button to press by now. I don't know, maybe it helped other players, I just found it a little irritating. Other weird things that I found slightly annoying include not moving while on moving screws, which could honestly just be a bug, or this one-way platform that disappears, but for some reason it's replaced with black blocks in the background. I just assumed it was a platform and died. I mean, it was right after a save, which was nice, but still a little annoying. I mean, I'm not even sure if it was a problem for others. I, I might have just been an idiot. However, one problem that I am sure others have dealt with is the weird jumping physics. Now, I'm not talking about the floaty jump. That's fine. It was a bit weird at first, but it was fine. No, the real problem was with the landing. Whenever you land, you lose all momentum. Why? Usually when I play games, I like jumping around because I find it more fun. However, here, it just felt irritating. Having the stop and go momentum sucked. Now, it wasn't the biggest deal. Most of the game takes place in these small puzzle rooms. So being fast, was really necessary, but it was still annoying. If Mark or, I don't know, Mr. Brown wants to keep this weird momentum in his game because he thinks it adds to the game feel or something, at least add a small recovery animation so it feels less awkward. But finally, here's the biggest problem I had with this game. It didn't respect my time. Now, what I mean by this is two things. First, remember how I said that the weird momentum stopping jump isn't that big of a problem because you're always in small puzzle rooms? Well, the biggest exception to this is at the very beginning of the game. At the start, you have this hallway that teaches you the basics of the game. How to jump up, across, on buttons, etc. But it does so, so slowly. There's this whole area built just to show you that you can jump through this platform, which is important, but also very obvious, and I don't know why they couldn't have just put it right after the jump before it. Why is there so much of a gap? There are many more ways that could have not only saved space, but saved time by moving things closer and even combining them. Like, take this button tutorial for example. Here, you press a button and then go through the door, but you have to jump to get through the door. Why couldn't this have been the jumping tutorial? It's already pretty basic with absolutely no hazards. Why 
why didn't you just lower the door slightly to make it even easier and bam, you've just combined both tutorials in one area. But instead they're separated with plenty of empty space in between. It's it's so weird. The other way the game wastes your time is more understandable. The game's pretty easy. Most of the puzzles didn't require much thought, just doing. The later puzzles though were pretty good. Honestly, I think this is only a problem due to time constraints. Just give it more time and Dr. Toolkit can come up with more difficult, simple puzzles to put at the beginning of the game to make it more interesting before you get to the complex puzzles at the end. I don't really have any suggestions here other than just add more puzzles, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna do that anyway. Now, it may seem like this demo is very unpolished because there's so many simple fixes that could have been made and that's 100% correct, but it is still just a demo. There are still plenty of places where small touches were made just to make it more fun. Like one room has you move this block to the left while you run up and grab on riding on it. So it obviously needs to move slow enough for you to be able to get up there in time. But if you mess up, it'll be irritating to wait for it to come back. So it just comes back faster. It goes one way slowly and the other way faster. It's a simple change, but it makes the puzzle that much more easy to solve. Things like this are what make good games, great games. Anytime you see something that's slightly annoying, you fix it till there's no annoyances. Also, there's this thing. I, I don't know what it is, but it's clearly supposed to intrigue you. And I don't know what to think about it. Anyways, I have high hopes for the full game when it eventually comes out. No idea how long that'll be, but I hope it's long enough for all the corners to be sanded down for this game to be made as perfect as it can possibly be. But with that, that's all I have to say about this demo. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you can, I suggest you checking the game out. I enjoyed it. But with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope Mark does end up finishing the game. Honestly, he might drop the project. I hope he doesn't. I find a lot of fun. Um, also, I wrote a script for this video. Most videos, I just have notes and then try to come up with the say as I'm reading them. But this time, I wrote like an actual script and read it word for word. Well, I made a few changes while recording, but it's mostly the same. So that was nice.